right. So, goaded on, unwillingly, <laughs> by Gabriel. Actually, I, I don't mind this question. This is about the politics, the politicization of art. I don't really mind the question. I think there's a constructive way of discussing this that isn't uh, about your way, my way, left, right, any of that stuff. It has to do with art, with, about the, 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 the fine art of painting, you know? So, uh, here's a question. Uh, and it definitely is a follow-up from what I said previously, okay? I'm curious about what your opinion is on less totalitarian ways of representing social reality, since you talked about Mao, Stalin, etc. And there was, in the late 19th century and early 20th, a big movement of Impressionist artists who took the social issues of their time to make works of art, for example, like Repin in his famous painting of the Volga workers, or Soroya in his social realist paintings. Later in the States, we had the Ashcan School, who also took the reality of working-class people in the, in the New York of the early 20th century. Uh, I'm curious about students, uh, about what's your opinion on taking that subject and using it to create a beautiful work of art? Gabriel. Yeah, so it's, we've been there before, and I, and I said before, I, I've, if you really want um, to look at the politicization of art, look at what's happened in, since the, before the 20th century, but I don't think it's been a good thing for painting, but that may or may not be, have anything to do with subject. I mean, I think it has a great deal to do with politics taking over and pretending to be art, so to speak. Guys are far more interested in another field. Um, that's a, you know, I mean, literally much more interested in being um, of their tribe, so to speak, or of their political ilk than they are in really being great painters. Now I say that, yeah, uh, and that you have a guy like Corbet who's a perfectly good painter, and he is doing that with a significant part, and expressly so, a significant part of his life. Um, but I just want to make sure you've seen this in case nobody's asked me for the, nobody's actually sent me an email address yet. So this is the article Art um, and Revolution that I've written. And I just simply did research to find out what the, whether or not there was any, you know, what the nature of this thing is, this modern thing. Uh, what's happened, you know, with the decline of, um, of uh, representational work. And that's that thing that we've always admired and loved, you know, that beautiful thing that we call painting and it has this very definition of the word aesthetic attached to it, you know, from long history, you know, along with music and other things. But, but beauty, you know, and um, so, you know, that, that was the incentive for a, a magazine to ask me to write an article. And I did, and I wouldn't tell you it was a particularly great article, but I've rewritten it. I've just taken out all this sophomoric stuff which was mostly about me trying to create some sort of a little about me thing, about how I found this information. I took all that stuff out and just give you the information straight. So this is a rewritten version of it, but it's there. All right, that's all the preliminary stuff. So isn't it interesting though that where we are today is uh, uh, in his conversation is whether or not there's a good version of propaganda art. And I know you don't mean to be saying that, but you are actually saying that. Because all art, whose purpose is to sell your product, meaning literally your, your Christianity, your faith, your um, uh, politics, whether it's freedom politics or left-wing politics, uh, whether it doesn't make any difference. When that's your agenda, that's your, 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 and, your, and your purpose in doing it is to propagandize, then you're a different person, that is say, from a person whose purpose is to create beauty, whose purpose is to actually enhance the visual um, uh, world that our neighbors live in, for example. I mean, one of the things I have as a problem with modern architecture is just flat out ugly it is. I mean, I, you know, I, I was just looking at the courthouse in my little town here. This courthouse built not, I don't know, maybe 30 or 40 years ago. It is just, it's been a box, it's always a box, and it's gotta be, the, the longer it sits there, the uglier it is. I mean, it's not one of those places like the uh, Notre Dame that you would be upset if it burned down, and believe me, I hope it doesn't now that I've said this, but I won't even tell you what it's out of so you don't. Um, anyway, but <laughs> I would never burn a building down, but the point is, it's flat, 
ugly. I mean, it is just an unpleasant, it's an eyesore in the community. The old buildings that used to be, the old town buildings, the old, uh, the, the buildings that now house most of the county facilities, they're very nice, they're very beautiful. Not particularly really special, but they're, but they're very nice. They, they're nice to see coming around the bend. That courthouse ain't, sorry guys. Whoever the architect is and whatever brilliant thing you thought you were working with or were working with, is it just doesn't come across visually. And there's a whole discussion, by the way, of that. My question for you as a painter, what's your job? I mean, for me as a painter, what's my job? Uh, I know you're not, you haven't asked that yet. You know, can you make works? You can make works with any subject. Any subject at all. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, but you'll have a negative effect on a lot of people. I think what's happening today in the movies, you know, and people talk about the, um, you know, movies are being less and less watched. Well, certain kinds of them are those that are trying to propagandize people. They try to, try to, try to, you know, they pretend they're giving you entertainment. I say pretend, they actually are giving you entertainment, but they're loading it up with an attempt to change your mind about things political or things, as I say, tribal, your way of looking at things. Well, there's nothing wrong with having your way of looking. Your way of looking at things is going to come through in a painting in any case, right? But to overtly do it and the purpose of it being to change minds rather, you know, is, or even to have it be a mixed bag to change minds or just simply to be change minds and be beautiful. I mean, like, but there's a problem with that, isn't there? There's a conflict there. It, it, it alters your focus. And, uh, and so there's an agenda attached and all that sort of stuff. Well, that's kind of always the way it is, in my mind, with illustration in the first place. Illustration is a use of an art form. But the soul of painting is, is, is visual beauty. That's the soul of painting. <laughs> And your job actually is to bring something, so when somebody takes it to their house, it enhances the environment with color, with pattern, with what all the components are of the eye, uh, with rhythm, with, with, it's just like, as I said, it's like music. That's your job. You know, and it's, it's, it's not my job to tell you what to paint about, what, what you, you know, but I, I could take a list, and maybe I will put them up there um, of paintings. The um, I think I will. I'll put up the Watts, the Leighton, and the uh, Moore that I talked about a while ago when Gamble was discussing his whole point of subject. I'll put one of each of these up here in front of us and watch them while I begin while I talk. But you can see plainly that these guys are in very different places. One is doing casual women playing tennis or lying on a just totally nothing sort of Greek-like things, very magnificent in color and delightful to have. The next one is Greek stuff. We don't have any feeling for the Greek stuff. What is this? You know, this Greek thing by Leighton. And the third one is Watts. And Watts is this guy who's got important, very important things to say. And somehow, he may be the example of what I'm talking about. Somehow, he weaken, it weakens his efforts. It seems like it ought to enhance his efforts, but I don't see Watts being that great painter in the abstract way that both of the other guys are. Uh, it, it, you know, so... If you say, if, if, if that continues to happen, if, 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 if subject dominates you into caring less or having less neural energy, remember that term? Neural energy at the end of the day to make sure you, whatever else you did, you brought home the music, then I think you've got a sort of a really significant problem. The one I laugh about, as you know all the time, is the oath of the tennis court. I mean, like, it's, it sounds funny to us, right? In David's day, David was right in the middle of a revolution. Like, I mean, who probably wasn't in, from 1700s on? <laughs> but, but David was right in the middle of a revolution and almost was executed. I mean, but he was actually signing death warrants, as I understand it, guillotine warrants for people. I mean, what a, what a thing, you know? And so he does this thing, a very important picture called the Oath of the Tennis Court, probably trying to persuade people in his day. And it's a good thing it's a nice design because it certainly isn't meaningful to us. <laughs> So that would be a case in point where you could say, here a guy can have a very meaningful design. He sort of guessed there must have been something important happening there. But do you really care what it was? <laughs> I mean, I don't think, you know, two people out of a thousand could, will trouble themselves to care what it was, unless they're historians or something like that, and then they'll use it for an illustration in the book they're writing or whatever. Well, it's all wonderful and good. But uh, the subject is, 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 in a sense, nothing to... Gamble said it was that specifically. He said subject is nothing. Well, subject is nothing in relation to what the arts do. It doesn't matter what your subject is. So it's irrelevant what your subject is. So have a nice day. Do those things. You can expect possibly that you'll, if, you're, if you go in and become a, a, a right-wing this or a left-wing that and try to propagandize people, you're going to have a very limited audience. 
the people wanting your work. I mean, you may do really good work, but I still wouldn't bring it to my house if I was actually, you know, even a little strong-minded about something else. Would not, would I, you know, uh, you know, there, that could be said about anything from, from works based on faith, you know, what I call the Jesus pictures, and I don't do that with disrespect to Christ, to, um, to uh, just raw propaganda art of Mussolini, you know. I mean, by the time these tyrants die, you know, those pictures, I mean, I can see why they tear down monuments that in themselves might have been beautiful. I can see why they do, because the content <laughs> of their lives was so atrocious. But, but uh, nevertheless, will they, you know, I don't know. That's, I don't want to get into that tear down monuments thing. Um, but let me just see if, I, if this triggers any other thoughts. I'll just look at this again, uh, Gabriel. Um, yeah, it really doesn't matter which one of those guys you took. I want to say something, yeah, because I mean, say Repin or, 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 or Corbe, Corbe um, Millet was accused of that, and he denied it absolutely that he was a socialist uh, or that he, had, he was trying to do any kind of a political statement. And that's a question, I want to talk about him some more, but, um, but the question, uh, what came to mind there was the, um, when he's talking about all these... Um, um, about all these um, Ashcan painters, the um, what, what what I began to wonder about now some some of the guys around the Ashcan school are really really good painters, but when you look at the work of Bellows and Sloan, who get most of the credit for being, um, uh, and even Glackens, these guys who get the most of the credit for being the heart, you know the, the the politically active ones, it's just like it's surprising how untrained they are for the amount of information there was at the time. You know, they're, they obviously spent way too much of their time in politics instead of down at the, uh, instead of down at the studios. I mean, I say that based on the... I, well, I'll tell you what to base it on. Go down, go find a copy of Jackman, Evelyn Jackman's book called American Painting, okay? It's a majorly important history. It shows a picture of virtually everybody who painted right up until probably the 1930s or 40s, I can't remember when, but you will never have seen anything like this. This book uh, puts all the historians of, the, 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 the painting historians into a totally embarrassing situation because there's so many really good American painters, say from the 1860s right up into the 1900s, into the, in, right into, almost to the middle, you talk about Paxson dying in 41. So right into that era, this, and they show them all. I mean, they actually give fair coverage to all these guys. And I'm not going to tell you that Boston School looks good, but it doesn't look special. There's so many good painters, well-trained. They could go to Europe and get really good training, et cetera, and uh, they get it at home, um, and most of which is where Paxton's came from. So um, it just suggests to me that they were busy doing something else, you know. I mean, we had, we had, we've all had friends when we were kids who were, were, you know, you'd be painting at the Art Students League and they'd be somewhere else. You'd almost never see them in the studio. They were not going to be painters. Um, and, you know, that's, you have a split education. You have a split focus in your life all the way through. You're likely not going to be as good a painter. And, and, and a bunch of those guys did polemic, polemical cartoons and all that sort of stuff. Well, fine, go do those polemical cartoons, but don't confuse it with, with another art form. And by the way, don't waste your time attacking people who paint their daughters and wives in settings because the way the light is working, how magnificent it is, and the beauty of the dresses and all these things, and, and they just see visual magnificence there. And I'm talking about the attack the Ashcan guys did. And, you know, the, and the problem with the political people who are oriented around the politics is that they make enemies out of people uh, for, for the wrong reasons. I mean, like, why would you pick on somebody for doing women in beautiful dresses? If you're an artist, you wouldn't. You're saying, man, I gotta get up to work to speed with these guys. These guys are really good painters. And I gotta make a better art than, than that. I've got, I'm not doing well. And by the way, I would suggest to you that you're not even doing well as a socialist if you're not really a good painter first. That's one of the things you gotta give credit to the Chinese and the, and the, and the, um, and the Russians for. I mean, they kept these traditional schools going because they probably, and I know it was in the case of Mao, he wanted really good socialist painting. And, uh, and, and his strategy was actually to embarrass the West with it, you know, as we got more and more sort of avant-garde. Uh, so I'll see if there's anything else. I've gone an awfully long time on this thing. Um, I actually do, in certain ways, it's a, such a big question. I really do like it. Oh, yeah, the, so the, the question of Millet, um, 
uh, I'll tell you, and, I, and I'm going to quote Anne Rand too. Anne Rand, uh, in terms of subject, and never mind what she does with her novels, uh, you know, where she's actually simply, she writes, she writes a, a pretty good novel, but she's obviously got a point of view. I don't have a problem with that, but I think what she says is really compelling. And there's an essay or two that you should read, you might want to read, right? One is called Art and the Sense of Life. And the other one is called Art and, uh, what's the other one called Art and, anyway, the two essays in one of her books. Um, uh, but Art and the Sense of Life really does tell you what is actually happening by way of subject. The subject of a picture, inevitably, if you're just painting trees, your sense of life is what comes through it. And it's like people say your example is far more important than your words. And I think you're going to find that to be the case. Not just the, ex I mean, I do mean the example of whether or not you do good paintings. That's an interesting thing. Do you respect your form? But, but even just, do you find love? You know, I love that, that Alfred Stebbins, when they were first seeing the Japanese pictures coming to, uh, to the West, he just said, these people paint with love. Now, that's a phenomenally beautiful concept, right? And so, so um, there's a thing that goes on with, uh, I did lose track of that, so sorry about that, where I was headed there. The, uh, but there's a thing that goes on there. You look at the, when you start looking at Millet and the sense of life, uh, with that idea of Millet and the sense of life. So I've never seen work. Now, now Rembrandt and Millet are kind of like two of a kind, two of a, two of a special class in the art in our art, and, and that is that they are so full of empathy. In the case of Malay, it's empathy for mankind. It's like, the, it's like he sees us all in a struggle, and that's why I think socialists like, want to grab onto him. But he, but, but he sees us all, he sees us, his man born down and uh, in a melancholy kind of a, a um, weight, you know, the weight of being a human. And, you know, we in this country, and I don't know, I'm sure that some of you guys listening to me are living under some of the same burdens, but we in this country in America, we don't live under that same pressure. And yet you can feel it. And you've felt it at times in your own personal life, but you can feel the burden of being a human, you know, the burden of getting up in the morning, make sure there's food on the table, you know, the, 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 the weight. And there's a kind of a melancholy because there's a sort of a fear and there's an attached fear of death and those sorts of things. Well, Millet really brings that across. And in the case of uh, Rembrandt, he does the same thing. They both do it with the human body and the, the empathy they have, the, with, in, in, what you call expressive empathy. These, kid, these people reaching out to the little child who's trying to learn to walk and just the, way the bodies, the total empathy of these bodies doing these things. Well, so what's the subject, you know? Is the subject kid learns to walk? Or actually, is it way more profound than that? Do you know what I mean? So I always suspect the idea of subject, and I suggest to you that the idea of subject should be changed to the idea of something else, right? And I think your sense of life is ultimately what the subject is, whether you like it or not. And I think the reason the Boston School and is, is associated with light is because that was their sense of light. It was the glory, if you want to call it the glory of God, but it was something about the glory. There's something about the light that just, they responded to, and it with a big yes. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I have... We have a painter friend who, um, I'm way long here, Dean. Oh, I'm so sorry. We have, I have a painter friend who's a good painter, a really good painter, and he did a painting that was polemical in nature. And I, I was asking, you know, in a, in a generic way, I don't think I ever asked it to him specifically, but why would you do that? Why would you demean your form like that? You know, it's not a picture that says you love something. It's a picture that says you despise something. But even if you're saying you despise modern art, you've just left, you've just left the aesthetic that we live in, which is, what do you love? You follow? So I don't know if I have gotten you any place at all, but it's a fantastic discussion. Um, you can bring up something else further if you want. <laughs> get me back into this again. But thank you. I got to get out of here. It's 20 minutes already. All right. Take care. See you next time. Uh, 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 whatever. Uh, subscribe, like, uh, share, hate, whatever. All right. Talk to you again.